Tina solved the quadratic equation and found the solutions to be a negative 3 halves and 6. Which of the following is equivalent to the quadratic equation that Tina solved? So you're going totally backwards. x equals negative 3 halves or x equals 6. So both those work. Um, so maybe we should put and. x is negative 3 halves and x could be 6. So let's make it look like a, b, c, or d. You're going to have a group times a group and your answer is 0. It equals 0. So I'm going to put an x, I'm going to put an x, and I'm going to play around with this one first. It's going to be a little bit easier. Okay, x is 6. So 6 goes right in place of x. Okay, now you got to use the zero product property. If you're multiplying a group by another group and your answer is 0, that means 1 or both of those groups has to equal a 0. So if I sub 6 in for x, 6 plus what is 0? And your answer has got to be a negative 6. So I am liking A and B. So I can eliminate C, D. Now I got a 50 50 shot. And the other one, x is negative 3 halves. If I plug in a negative 3 halves right there, negative 3 halves plus 3 halves is 0. Uh, but that's not A or B. So here's what I'm going to do use your street smarts. You can sub this in to A or B and see which one gives you a 0. So A says 3 times whatever you sub in. I'm going to sub in a negative 3 halves, and then I'm going to add 2, and that should be 0. Make this a fraction. Times your tops, that's negative 9. Times your bottoms, 2. Negative 9 divided by 2 plus 2 is not 0. So I'm pretty sure it's B. But just to verify, we can do 2 times what you sub in. I'm going to sub in a negative 3 halves. And then I'm going to add 3 to it, and that's 0 times your tops. Negative 6 divided by 2, that's a negative 3. Plus 3 equals 0. Yep, that one works. It is B. If x is the group 2 minus i plus the group 3 minus i times the group 3 plus i, you are going to do just the order of operations. Do your multiplication first. Distributive property 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times i is 3i. Negative i times 3 is negative 3i. Negative i times i is negative i squared. Alright, 9. Okay, these guys, two center terms cancel out. That's nice. i squared is a negative 1, so I got a negative, negative 1. So that's a positive 1. 9 plus 1 is 10. So I've got 2 minus i plus 10. So I have, combine your terms, your like terms, and you should have 12 minus i. The table below shows the relationship between the values of x and y. <clears throat> Which of the following equations describes the relationship? Okay, you can use street smarts. You just plug in a, plug in b. Plugins, find one that works. But I'm going to look real quick at the table, and I see my x's, they're just going up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so they're going up 1 every time. So it's a constant uh, rate of change for the x's. Let's look at the y's. 3 to a 6, it went up 3. So I'm hoping it's going to be up 3, up 3, up 3, up 3 every time. 6 to 11 is up 5. 11 to 18 is up 7. 18 to 27 is up 9. So it's changing at an increasing rate. It's not changing at a constant rate. So it's not going to be a constant equation. It's not linear. It is not A. It is not B. So I'm going to shoot for C. Okay, C, the rule is whatever you plug in, you square it, then you add 2, and that should give you your Y. So I'm going to plug in for X a 1, for Y a 3. So 1 squared plus 2 is 3. Yes, that works. Let's do a couple more just to verify. Plug in 2 for x. Plug in 6 for y. 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. All right, it works. Let's plug one more. <clears throat> plug in a 3 square. Add 2. That's 9. Plus 2 is 11. Yep, it gives you 11. Maybe the last one. Let's skip and plug in 5. 5 squared is 25. Plus 2 is 27. 
Okay, it works. Gave you 27. Solve for x. Log in base 3 of the quantity 3x plus 2 is equal to log in base 3 of the quantity 5x minus 14. So, you can kind of uh, use common sense. The log in base 3 of this group equals the log in base 3 of this group. So that must mean that your two groups have to be equal. They have to. Or you can use your, your log properties. If you got the log in base 3 on one side, log in base 3 on the other, they're going to undo themselves. They're going to cancel out. So get your x's on the same side. I'm going to minus 3x's, minus 3x's. You should have 2 equals 2x minus 14. Um, plus 14, plus 14. 16 equals 2x. So that must mean x is 8. Okay, system of equations. This is a typo. There's no answer that satisfies this system in your choices A, B, C, D. So street smarts. You could start plugging in A. That's x. You got to plug it into the top and to the bottom. It's got to work on both. The y, plug into the top, plug into the bottom. And if you manipulate them, the top should be 3, the bottom should be negative 5. But uh, because it's a typo, even if you go through A, B, C, D, you will not find one. So, let me just show you the algebra real quick in case this does show up. They want you to eliminate them. They want you to add them vertically. If you do that, you get 3x and 2x is 5x. y minus 3y is uh, negative 2y. And I'm going to eliminate pretty easily without much stress your y's. If I times that y by 3, 3y minus 3y, there's your 0. But i got to triple everything. i got to times this by 3, so that's going to be a 9. This by 3, that's a 9. 9x and 2x is 11x. And that's 0. 11x equals 4. Divide by 11, divide by 11. x should be 4 elevenths. And then you'd plug that in to solve for y. But I'm going to stop. Okay, let's skip this one. Two functions, f of x and g of x. They want you to add them. Okay, f of x, I'm going to simplify this first. I'm going to distribute a property. 3 times x squared is 3x squared. 3 times 2x is 6x. Um, and I'm going to add that to g of x. So I'm going to add 5x squared minus 8. So 3x squared and 5x squared is going to be 8x squared plus 6x minus 8. And that's going to give us D. Using the properties of logs, write this difference as a single logarithm. Okay, this is a good one. If a log shows up, it's probably going to be something like this, not one as easy as the one we just barely did. Okay, if you've got a number times a log, you can use your uh, power property. You can take that 4 and you can put it in place of an exponent. So it's really log in base 3 of 8 to the 4th power. I'm going to do the same thing with that 10. I'm going to take that 10 and go right here. So it's going to be minus log in base 3 of 2 to the 10th power. Okay, now the subtract means you can rewrite those two logs as a single log but you're going to take the log in base 3 you can take the first one 8 to the fourth and you're going to divide it by the second 2 to the tenth and I'm going to have to simplify it 8 to the fourth is 4096 2 to the tenth is uh, 1,024. So I'm going to divide that on my calculator. 4,096 divided by 1,024. And it is going to clean up pretty nice. It's just going to be log and base 3 of 4. So, C. Okay, last one. Range. Um, range is all of your Y's. 
that is your range right there so your range is gonna be two and three so B so range if you're looking at a graph this graph right here and they ask you what the range is the range is the Y so how far up and down it goes this line the arrows mean it goes forever so if you look to the right that's gonna keep climbing it's gonna reach all the way to infinity if you look to the left it's going down so the range on this one would be uh, all real numbers for this graph 